Hi Shanti Lines, welcome back to the Phoebe way. If this is your first time, my name is Phoebe and on this channel we talk about life in Germany, how to make life in Germany easy for you as an expat, as a foreigner living in Germany. And if you have any further questions to any of the topics we are discussing today, you can always reach us on info at the Phoebe Yes, we run an agency where we have expat solutions as well. Today's topic is rent in Germany. Yes, I just moved to a new place and some of my clients are also looking for apartments in Germany and some of them have unfortunately been scammed because they don't know how rent in Germany works, okay? So first of all, in this video, we're going to talk about the types of accommodation you can get, you can rent in Germany, how you should go about it, the documents that you will need and how rent is made up in Germany as in what is warm rent, kalt meeting, warm meeting, and all of that. So if this is what you're looking for, if you know somebody who needs this video, please don't be selfish. Send this video to them, share it, like, comment. If you have not yet subscribed or followed us, if you're watching us on TikTok, Instagram, YouTube, please make sure that you have become one of us. Become a chatty line too, okay? <laughs> all right, let's get into it. What a lot of people do not know is that it's about between 40 and 50 percent of people in Germany who are renting and if the rent situation in Germany goes well, you'll be living in the apartment for years, for years. Why am I the best person to talk about rent? Not just the fact that I am an interpreter with specification on law, as in law in Germany, as I've been dolmetscherin in mit Rechtswesen, Schwerpunkt auf Recht. But I have also moved at least six, seven times here in Germany, though always in Baden-Württemberg. But I can tell you that I have had experience, first had experience with different type of landlords. So let's start with what can you rent? So depending on your life situation, you can rent a single room in a shared apartment. You can rent a single room as a full accommodation. That's what we say in Ghana or in, yeah, in Ghana, we call it self-contained, one room self-contained, right? Yes, you can rent something like that, or you can rent more rooms in the apartment. You can also have a furnished and serviced apartment because usually the apartments in Germany are not furnished, okay? They are not furnished. You don't have a, most, some of the time, some of the, most of the time you don't have a kitchen, you don't have curtains. Basically, it's just a room for you to make it to your taste, right? Good. And then of course you can rent a whole house everything is possible basically you can also rent a furnished apartment which is some most of the time a bit more expensive because of course you have the furniture in there so yes this is the, these are the types of accommodation that you can get in Germany okay for rent good now how do you go about it number one don't get scammed I've had one or two people talk to me about being scammed because they paid the deposit the cartoon before they saw the apartment. Don't do that. I have a video where I talked about where I they tried to scam me as well, but of course not. I saw right through it. I have a video that I'm going to, if you're on YouTube, I'm going to link it right here so you can go check that out. But if you haven't watched that, just go, if you're on TikTok or any other platform watching this, go on YouTube, the Phoebe Way rent scam, and you would just Put that in the search and then you'll find it okay so number one don't get scammed and the num main thing they'll tell you is that i am out of the country i'm the landlord i'm out of the country and i need you to pay it into this account pay the cartoon the deposit into this account so you secure the apartment do not do that don't pay for an apartment you or someone you have authorized have not seen yet okay good now Let's talk about what you need to have before you can rent an apartment in Germany. So I just talked about a representative. You can have someone represent you. Yes, that, let's put that aside. Number two, what you need to have is depending on your situation in Germany, ID or passport. But normally they would just want to see the ID to just make sure that you are the person. Then you need the Einkommensnachweis, the proof of your income. And usually it's enough if you are an employee to bring the last three months of your pay slip. I mean, yeah, last three months pay slip, exactly the 
last three months you added the swell another thing is they want to know your credit score as in your credit certificate and that usually is by shufa shufa would give you that certificate i believe it's i have to check the price i'll put the price right here but just go to shufa directly don't go to any middleman go on shufa.de directly and apply there and they will send it to you actually that moment okay so you need to have that certificate and most landlords would also ask you to have mit schulden okay let's go mit schulden freiheitsbescheinigung mit schulden freiheitsbescheinigung one thing i love i love about the german language is not just the long words but the fact that you can break down the word to know what it means mit schulden that is your rent word debt Okay, so rent that you owe, Freiheit, freedom, meaning that you should be free from rent debt bescheinigung certification. So the certification that proves that you are not owing your landlord, that is what you need. And that is what you go to your landlord and tell them that, yes, I, if you have a previous landlord, of course, you let them know in Germany, you let them know that, hey, I need you to certify that I have not owed you rent and I'm leaving in, in an amicable solution or in an amicable situation. So that is what you would need. These are the basic things that you would need for you to get the apartment. And then I'm talking about what you need, but how do you get the apartment? Let me give you this tip. A lot of people will tell you about Immoscout, Immonet, and these um, websites, but you can actually look for a makler. Makler is an agent, okay? an agent in the place you want to get the apartment at. So for example, I live in Stuttgart. I want to get an apartment in Stuttgart. Or let me say I want to get an apartment in the northern part of Stuttgart, which is maybe Tuffenhausen. I would just put in Makler in Tuffenhausen and then I'll go on their website and then check out how how many apartments they have. Is it a two room, three rooms? What do I like? The good thing about going through the Makler is that the makler is not paid by you, the future tenant, but by the landlord. So engaging the services of a, you know, you not be engaging them per se, but using the services of a, of a makler or the agent is free for you as the tenant. So don't sleep on this, okay? Just go up to them and they will do the pre-screening for the landlords as well. That's another thing. They will do the pre-screening. But if you know that you have everything that it takes, go through the makler and save yourself some stress. Good. So I've already talked about these websites. These are for when you usually want an apartment that is not furnished, that is not serviced. But if you want an apartment that are serviced, then feel like a second home. So you just move in with your suitcase and your two spoons. Go for these websites. Good. So now we've talked about what you need and where to look. Now let's talk about how to look and what you should look out for. In Germany, we have the cold rent and the warm rent. Yes, not only do you get a naked apartment, you also get a cold apartment. So if you want your apartment to be warm, you pay the warm rent. Actually, everybody pays the warm rent, but the cold rent is what is broken down. Like the, you pay the warm rent, but the, it's broken down into cold rent and utilities, okay? So the cold rent is the original amount of the apartment so let's say your cold rent is 500 euros your warm rent is what 700 euros so the difference this 700 this this 200 euros sorry this 100 euros is the utility so for trash depending on what is in your contracts obviously for the trash for um, heating heating is what makes it warm obviously so heating for gas um, sometimes it used to be cable like TV cable and internet but now it has to go through the tenants themselves. That's the new law that passed in June. So make sure, or not passed, but came into effect from June. So make sure that you read through the contracts very well to know what your utility bills exactly are and what are they made of. Most of the time, the utility costs are then settled at the end of the year. So latest, somewhere in the middle of, let me say the utility bill, the final one will come for this, year for 2024 probably by june of next year most landlords are fast some are not but yeah and then you know if you have to reimburse or if you get money back so that utility cost is usually an estimate and if you spend more or if you use more utilities you have to pay more 
and that's what they call the Nachtzahlung. Okay, so somebody would tell you, I got a high Nachtzahlung for heating or Nebenkosten Nachtzahlung, that is what they mean. When they say Nebenkosten Vorauszahlung, those are the advanced payments. That is what you pay together with your cold rent to make it a warm rent. If you have any questions, do not hesitate. Write them down below or email me and I will answer you, okay? If you don't want anybody to know what you're asking. But this is the situation, all right? Good. Now, let's talk about the caution. I talked about the caution in the beginning. Caution is the deposit as in the security for the landlord that in case you spoil anything in the apartment, they will use that money from the caution to repair it, all right? That is after you are moving out. The, main, the moment, those times that you're living in the apartment, if anything should spoil, you should make sure that you let the landlord know. And some landlords write in the contract that if it's something below 100 euros, you take care of it. If it's something more than that, they will take care of it. So it depends on the contract that you sign with the, with the landlord. And this is where the language comes in. If you do not understand the language, make sure that you just put it into depot or you have someone translate it for you, okay? It is very important. Take your time to understand the contract before you sign it. So before you go for the signing, you can ask for it in digital form so you can, you know, acquaint yourself with the contract. Very important. Also, normally the caution is two to three month times the amount of your rent. So if your rent is seven of your cold rent so if your our rent now is 500 the one we use in the first example is 500 so the caution will be either a thousand or thousand five hundred euros some people do 2.3 times the monthly cold rent some people will do three times straight so that is the thousand five hundred it depends on what is in the contracts but the usual thing is between two and three months Next thing is my final tips for you. I already said do not pay into an account before you see the, the, the property that you're supposed to be renting. The next thing is that if you're moving out of the apartment, a lot of people when they're moving out of the apartment, they have issues with their landlord. I have seen something like that before. Now what you have to do is when you are doing the Uber Garbage, the handover, they would inspect the apartment to see if you spoiled something and then that's when they would say okay. I have a thousand five hundred euros from you. I'm going to take five hundred euros from this thousand five hundred and repair whatever you spilled, and then you can take thousand euros back. That is possible, but if you know that your landlord during the time of the tenancy was problematic, go with witnesses. Okay, probably some people who look older than you, people who are more mature than you. It helps a lot. This is what I did in the my previous ones, and it's really really helped okay that's another thing also make sure that you read the paragraph or the section with the cosmetic repairs being the shun heights of hot one very very well and discuss them and let them know and let them know that you want to know what they mean by that some landlords will try to make you paint the house before you leave and there is a law on that okay there's not well not a law but there's there's this uh, regulation on that if the, you got the house with white walls like I have now, I cannot paint it red and leave it red for the landlord, except he allows it. But if you got the walls painted white and you paint it red, you have to repaint it to white, okay? But if I got it, I got it as a red, uh, I got a red wall and I don't do anything and I stay here for a number of, a certain number of years, then I don't have to redo it. But basically, if you get white walls, leave them as they are. If you repaint them, you have to put them back in the, in the previous color, which is the white color. So this is one thing that you should know and you should be careful of. When it comes to this cosmetic, uh, cosmetic, one cosmetic repairs and the wall issue, it could, it's, it's a, it would be a long video. So I'm just going to cut it short and say that if you get white walls, leave them white. If you change the color, take, put the, put the walls back in white before you do the handover. Else, the landlord will make you pay. The next tip I'll give you is that when you are inspecting the house or the apartment before you move in, the day that you do the handover, the day that you get the key, make sure you read all the meters and you take pictures, okay? Take pictures so you're not overcharged, so they don't add what was used before your time 
to your bill. It happens, so please make sure you document that. Also document the damages or the defects that you saw in the apartment before handover or at handover because as I said, some landlords will try to put the blame on you and deduct the money from your caution. Beware. Last but not the least, you should think of having a half-fledged physician home that is the liability insurance that also covers the apartments. So if anything should go wrong, those people, that insurance company would cover it. And sometimes because it's a building, the cost can be can go high up to 1,000, 2,000 euros. But if you have an insurance that would just cost you 50, 70 euros a year, it really helps. So cost factors. So cost factors, depending on the type of apartment that you have, is your rent, the, I mean the warm rent, and then you have other utilities that are not included in the living cost, like electricity is not included, your cable, your internet, your TV is not included. You'd also probably have to pay the Kunfunkibion. This is what in Ghana would call TV license, okay? So the state, um, television stations they would demand that you pay actually it's a must for everyone except of course some exemptions I'm going to write here if I don't forget I'm going to write the exemptions here so these people are exempted but if you are not exempted you have to pay the Rundfunkgebühr these are also extra costs that you should think of when renting in Germany apart from that things I'll give you tips on when you're looking for an apartment is if you don't have a car Germany, most parts of Germany have good public transport. So check the closeness or the proximity to a bus stop, a train station. For example, how often does the bus come? How often does the train come? These are things you should think about. Is there an Einkaufszentrum? Is there Aldi, Lidl, Edeka? The best case is you have Aldi and Edeka, you have Rewe and Penny. So you have high end, low end, you know, yeah. Those, th those are the kind of things you should look at. For if you're a family, of course, you should look for a place where it's going to be convenient for you as a family with schools for the kids and all of that. If you have any questions, please do not hesitate. Leave them down below or just send them to me per inbox or per email and I will definitely answer them. I wish you all the best and I'll see you in the next video. Cheers.